Set your affections, set your affection on things above. Mm. Set your affection on things which are of Today I want to talk about Thank you
And I will grow you in the realm in the spirit. Let me say in the school of the spirit. I can say in the realm of the spirit. One of the things that really uh, got me really down is my heart. Where is it I really rule? was my heart. So, let me say where Satan sits was. And we talk about Satan sits, we talk about his throne, his, his seats. Uh, the Sephir thrones, government. Government. So, what is the ruling uh, government that powers the hearts? Because if you are to set your affection on things above, then this is something that. There is something that is driving your heart in connection with your desire. Yes. There is something in connect. There is like there is your own parts that connect to a particular part. So when you set your affection, then you are, there will be a help. When you set your affection on things above, then help from somewhere we or strength from somewhere will help you to connect and to be able to pick from the uh, influence or from the transmission. From the signal of what is above, because we have two things above. We have the government of Satan in the second heaven, and we have the government of God in the first heaven. So we are talking about setting your affection on things above. People used to think that Satan is always below or beneath or under their hearts, but it's. It's not like that. You know, when we're growing, there's a song that says, Jesus power, super power, Papa Lawo's power, Papa Les power. And we say we should be we should be using our hand to step on it as if yes, our feet. As if Satan is beneath our legs. But the Bible says God has raised us above all the principality, above. Above all the principality, it is above. It is not God has set us above the principality that are beneath, Lord, beneath our legs. Say God has set us above. Lagos, God has made us to sit far above. The principality, that's Ephesians 2 6. The principality is a power of darkness. So the principality is a power of darkness, and their government is far above. So when God is saying, set your affection on things above, that is the Colossians 3. Is that Colossians 3? Colossians 3 verse 2. 2, yes. So when the Bible is saying, set your affection on things above. Not on the things of the heart. If you are then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, 
where Christ seated. So, which are both where Christ seated, he's talking about the government or the seat or the throne of Christ that is above another throne that is that is that have a height in the heavenly places. So when the Bible says the good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good good and the evil person out of the treasure secret treasures produces evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks then Then there must be, or there must have been, a ruling government in our hearts. Because your soul stops, your soul stops, or let's say your soul saves what has been generated from your heart. Your soul is more like a storming uh, unit. Why your mind receives from the soul to help you to relate to the heart? I believe that. The government, the seat of Satan, or the seat of Christ, which two of them are both, these seats are within our hearts. They are ruling seats are within us. They are ruling seats. The government, the powers. Two Sundays ago, we, we talked about the makeup of Christ and the makeup of Antichrist. So, when we're talking about the court of heaven. And you see Satan coming. It's because the two thrones are very close to themselves. Remember when uh, the book of Job, when God called the attention of Satan, Job is before Sam. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Let's read from verse 5. It said, And it was so. Mm -hmm. When the days of their feasting were gone, so that's Job 1 from verse 5. Yeah. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, mm -hmm. that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them. For Job said, in, It may be that my sons have seen and cursed God in their heart. Then did Job, Job, then did Job continue. Wait. He said, he, he was interceding for them. And the purpose why he was interceding was that probably 
the government house of Satan can reside in our hearts. Probably my sons must have cursed God, must have sinned against God. So sin takes place in the heart. So he was interceding for them. He was uh, doing both conflict. He was praying because at that time, uh, you know, it's more of incense. Even to lie in the holy place, before you, when you're getting to the uh, is it brass altar, the priest gets to that place with incense. Is that the very close to the entrance to the most holy place. Incense means there must be a continuous prayers going. There must be continuous prayers. Incense, you see why gathering churches, uh, the members, they always, anytime they are sleeping in the night, they must burn incense. They have something like that that they put a, lamp, uh, a, a candle or oil and, you know, that thing was, that time I remember we had one brother like that that we used to go to his house uh, to, 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 like on holiday or something like that. When he put that thing, I always shout that I can't sleep. I don't think I can sleep. So, because of that, he, 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 he will switch it off or put it in his own room. And after that first time, before coming to his house, I will ask, brother, you want us to come, but let's agree. <laughs> That's your thing. I don't think I can. He said, don't worry, come. We will talk, we will talk about it. So, he says, to them it's like, uh, prayer must be, he says in the time of the Old Testament, it's more of prayer. That's why when you put offering, you are, you are praying. Praise the Lord. There was a time Abraham when he asked God about uh, the covenant he had with him. God, he, he burnt offering and he slept, and God showed him revelation. We also see this uh, story of uh, uh, the parents of um, Samson. It was when they were burning offering that the agent appeared. So, this is something, this is a connection from heaven to heart when you are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to relate to my teaching because uh, I have four topics that God has been breathing in my heart. But well, thank God for that message that Pastor Sophie said, which helped me to know the direction where God wants me to talk about this morning. So, he said, it may be that my sons have sinned and caused God in their hearts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the sin takes place in the hearts. Sin takes place in the hearts. So, if you are, if you are setting affection, your affection on things that are above, which, which, Government that is above that you are setting your affection upon. Which of the government? Is it the government that is in the second heaven? Or it is the government that is in the third heaven? And you see, what God did next in verses was that. Now there was a day when the Son of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among, among them. Can you see? So, that presentation is within our hearts. <laughs> that presentation was within the heart. So, heart is big. Heart is a realm. And we're talking about the realm of the spirit, 
That realm of the spirit is your heart. If you check Ezekiel 16 30, it says, How sick is your heart? Says the Lord, that you did all these things. The deeps of a brazen wall. Ezekiel 16 30. Say, How sick is your heart? Sixteen thirty. How sick is your heart? Is that what has gone on within your home realm? We when we're talking about the realm of the spirit, the problem I always have is that I don't have enough time to teach. I will have give you all scriptures, but one thing I always do is that I use all scriptures to be produce one teaching. So that when you finish, you can go to your Bible and begin to do the searching of that thought. When we're talking about the realm, realm is vast. So also heart is vast. You know, the way uh, your uh, what I put it? The way your arm up let me say Facebook app is just one app on your phone. But when you enter and you click onto the app, then you see that Facebook is vast. You can't know the length. If you are to spread Facebook on a paper or on the hand, and we are to be journey within each of it, you can't finish the journey because all the countries of the world are connected to Facebook. So this heart you see that is yours, you think it's so small, but it's vast in the name of the Spirit. Even that is the place where the Spirit lives. Some people I know as I'm teaching, they want to check the dictionary. I will advise you to go to and do a search about Bible meaning of the hearts. Bible meaning of the hearts. Because dictionary gives us the description to the hearts. Where pump, where pump, blood pumps is a heart. It also says it's, uh, it's a place of. Um, Is he says the seat of the affection, you know, or sensibilities collectively or separately as love, hate, joy, grief, courage. The seat of the understanding or will, usually a good sense personality. That is the dictionary meaning of the heart. But when we go to Bible meaning of the heart, it says the heart, according to the Bible, is part of the man's spiritual makeup. It is the place where emotions and desire begins. Um, the heart is the starting place for spiritual life. Is a starting place of spiritual life. So, when the Bible says there is a spirit in man, it's talking about the hearts of man. There is a spirit in man. There is a spirit in the heart of man. Because that heart is a realm. It's vast. It doesn't have the beginning and the end. The beginning of that heart starts from God. And the end from God. It head to, with God. And God doesn't have the beginning, doesn't have the end. But there is another, another heart which has the beginning and the end, which is the heart called uh, 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 the heart. The, the heart of Christ has the beginning and the end. Because uh, the Bible talks say the, the last enemy of man is death. 
and they are going to judge him. If he doesn't have an end, they won't, they won't be able to judge him. So it is God that allow only have the right to allow him. Hallelujah. So uh, when we're talking about hearts, when we're talking about the hidden man of the heart. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anywhere you are seeing your Bible, they say something of something of is like the something that is the essence of a place. It's like the image, something that that that, that explain a a a place. Let's say they want to say uh, the pastor, they want to talk about the redeeming place of the church. The first thing everybody will remember is Pastor Adewe. So he's the one that 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 that, ex, that, that all the governments all the way the, 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 the way the, 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 the things they do in that redeem is the man that represent the thing. That's what I want to say. He's the one that represents. So, the one that represents God was Jesus. And the school that represents God was Christ. So, when we talk about uh, Christ, the image of Christ is Jesus. Jesus is the first man that finished the school. It wasn't the first Adam that finished the school. The first Adam didn't finish the school. It was Jesus. That, so that's why they 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 they, they hook that school with, with his name, calling Jesus Christ. So when we're talking about the hidden man of the hidden man of the heart, the hidden man of the heart. So that man called Hoff. You cannot separate that man from the heart. You cannot separate that man. We talk about the word of God. That is the word that comes off God. You cannot separate anywhere you see half in your Bible. Something comes off of something. You cannot separate that thing from the source. But when you're talking about from from <laughs> it said it just it said uh the uh from is something that was created most of the word from is things that were created by still by the owner but that thing cannot represent God that thing speaks about God but that thing cannot really, there is no really connection like that. It's like created something and he left them. And when he left those things, this, those things still talk about God. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. You get it? Are you getting it? But the only thing that can connect the heavens back to God is that thing that comes half God. Half God. So, when we're talking about um, um, the image of God, the image of God, the image of God is like the essence of God. Is the essence? This this scripture explaining properly. Uh, Hebrews one three. Hebrews one three. Hebrews 1 3 says who be who that is the son the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person so when you talk about half the or half 
something. He's the one that comes when, when they ask Jesus, Who is the Father? Show us the Father. Jesus said, I am the Father. He wasn't saying, I am, I am the Godhead. He just said, I am the essence of the Father. I am the image of the Father. And the reason he was saying that the Father cannot come right now on that. But when you see me, you see the Father. He wasn't saying, I am the Father, like I am the Godhead. He was just saying that everything that my Father can do, I can do. That's what he always does, whatever he sees that his Father is doing. And every put like the son of the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact the exact representative representation of his being sustaining all this together sustaining all this by his powerful work sustaining the things that were created Connecting them back to God. So the things of God create, sustain, link things that are for God back to God. So when we're talking about the hearts, that you should set your affection on things that is above. It is what you set your affection on that you speak. So if you set your affection on the government of Satan, then you will speak, you will represent, you will be an ambassador of that government. So when you set your your heart on things that are of, 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 of sin, then there's a government that are already giving that things have been finished in the realm of the spirit. They are finished things. And when those things have been finished, then you speak those things. You confess those things. You confess those things. So let's say there is a um, court of hell. Because what happened in Job was court of hell. There was a court of hell. Uh, the sons of God. These sons of God, they are not sons of God by maturity. They are sons of God. They are kind of angels. They call sons of God. They presented themselves before God. And Satan came because he was once a son of God. <laughs> and when he came, God didn't chase him away. He knew that this one, no. <laughs> this one was my he was once my son. So there must be times. There must have been times. That the sons of God always present themselves. That would, that would have been the first time. So that was a court session. That was a court session. And God asked him, ah, You, where have you been? <laughs> where have you been? You know? And the Lord said unto Satan, Where's comment thou? Satan, where have you been? Where have you come from? He said, From going throughout the heart, going back and forth on it. So when the children of God presented themselves, a court session was called. And 
the source of God presented themselves. For them to have presented themselves, they have they must have had uh, 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 cases. And because God is a church God, if you check this scripture, uh, I think it's Psalm 82. That's what I like, I like about this script. He always gave me scriptures. Psalm 82, verse 1. So when, when the Son of God came and presented themselves, to God, a concession was arranged or was called. So at that time, God became a judge. Can you see? Psalm 82, verse 1 says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judge among the gods. And I say, God presents in the great assembly, he rendered judgment among the gods. So, when a case, a, a, a concession is being called, God, the creator, God, the father, at that time stands as a judge because God comes with. Hallelujah. So, any time either the sons of God win a case or Satan win a case. You'll be surprised that so many times Satan will win a case. He will give reasons with the word of God why God must give him chance to inflate to have to, to attack to attack to uh, 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 to attack the righteousness of God so let's go back to that scripture chapter 1 Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. That concession always takes place in the realm of the Spirit. That realm of the Spirit is your heart. Your heart is big. Is vast. If you check also the book of Ezekiel 26, verse 16. Is it verse 26 or 26, 16? Be 
doing outside the will of God is because a stone was put in the heart. See that scriptures. He said, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. So there is a stony heart or heart of stone. Heart that comes that is the essence. Don't forget the one I put out, put off. Heart of stone or stony heart means the same thing. Different versions. Put it different ways. The heart that you cannot connect, you cannot disconnect it. There is nothing that can make you to disconnect that heart from soul. Like you can't disconnect currents from fluorescent or from wire. Unless you switch it off. So it was the heart it was in the heart that Satan now presented himself what happened in John 1 was a court session and court session always take place in the heart the heart is the house for the spirit because that spirit is a kind of man. That's why I say the man is traumatized. This like man is three. So when if man does according to the stony heart, Satan can present the case of that man, even if he's a righteous man. To hold and in the winter case, the Bible says is the accuser of the brethren. Brethren are brothers and sisters in Christ. So when he wins a case, and one of the, the only reason he can win that case is that there is no intercessor praying for that person at that time. There is no intercessor praying. Let me tell you, Jesus prays all the time. That is the mediator between God and man. But at the same time, Jesus appears Jesus prays for all the hearts, everyone on the heart. He's also praying for those, the whole righteous, so that they can come to God. So, as the same way he prays for the righteous, so he sees he sees to be a mediator between God and man. He's a man of God. We're talking about what man of God means. <laughs> man of God is someone who has a seat. Man of God is one who has become the image of God in Christ. Man of God who has become the essence of God in Christ. He's a mature son. Anyone called man of God that is not mature is not yet a man of God. So a man of God is one that has gotten a seat and is as we call a mediator between God and man in Christ. When I'm talking about Christ, I'm talking about Christ as the tabernacle. Like a priest. Priests always go to the holy place carrying people's prayers to go and meet God. But Moses as a priest goes to the most holy place anytime. But the priest, I mean the son of Aaron, the 
they go to the holy place once in a year. But Moses can get to. We can call Moses a man of God. Moses is a man of God. One who has seen God. This is a man of God. God that the, the, the system, the principles, the laws of God has become what we cannot call out of that law of God. Not not what the kind of men of God we have this is. Many of them are just doing all kinds of things, but they will still call themselves man of God because of the anointing. Most people, they call themselves man of God because of the anointing upon. They don't have, or they, they certainly will go, but they have the range. But because the spirit of God or the gift of God is without repentance. They have the rage, but that anointing is still speaking on their head. So for you, it's very, very hard to know if they are man or who they are men of God or not. Because that's gift that's without repentance still speaks. Hallelujah. So the 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 the, the, the heart of man is a way, is a place where Satan can come and win a case. He will use it is the government of Satan that will tempt the man to fall. And I is that Satan. Can you see how the same one? Yes! It's the same Satan that will now go to God. And say, see your son has fallen. He has walked half out of flesh. We, he was give me right. And he handle scriptures. He will go scriptures to God. And the Bible says, God take his word more than his name, above his name. And most time, he is not supposed to win. But because there is no one interceding for that man at that time that can stand. That will make Jesus to appear in the courts, in that cause. That's why sometimes Jesus doesn't appear in every cause. Jesus doesn't appear in every cause. I know this by experience. Jesus doesn't appear in every cause, every court session. God, Jesus pray for everyone upon the heart. But if there's another person on the heart that is praying for that person according to the will of God. If God, Jesus is praying and somebody can pick the heart of God concerning another brethren, then Jesus will appear in the cause and avenge that person in the cause. But if no one is praying for any the particular brother that Satan brought his case into the court, Jesus may not appear and Satan may win that case. So if you see believers coming and you see them with afflictions, attacks, and you know, some kind of problems, it's because there is no one interceding. So if you see a brothers or brethren in the kingdom of God have diseases, have sicknesses, or have some attacks, it's because no one is interceding for that person. But that says the prayer of the righteous are very let much. If a brother is praying at that time, is the one praying for mercy or asking God for mercy at that time or for grace at that time that Satan appears, God will still, Jesus will still appear and avenge the same person. Or probably Jesus, or probably that person has prayed, has had some kind of prayers that even the time that Satan comes to the court to, uh, to, to win a case over that brother, 
The Bible says the prayer of the righteous avail, is available. So that prayer you've prayed may God, Jesus will use that prayer and appear. So when you see that things are not working well with you, see that things are not working well with you, things are, 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 are so hard, you know, there are so many things that is happening physically. I will ask you, pray. Go and pray. So now, uh, in connection to setting your heart or set your affection to the things above, is because uh, Satan is having a higher hand by his government in your heart, which they have uh, helped you to set your affection on things that are on heart. Is, is, there is a ruling power, there is a government within your heart that has not been shifted or has not been fully displaced or uh, uh, replaced by the government of God. Hallelujah. So your heart has a government because it is in your heart that generates the thoughts that drives your will. So if out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, there is a will that hope your mouth to speak. One thing will does is that it controls everything. It controls you. You cannot do anything if your will has not given you an instance to do it. If your will has not prompted you to go ahead, even to speak, you cannot speak if your will has given you go ahead to speak. Even so, sometimes when you are unconscious, let's say you are sleeping, you see that you get to your room, you see somebody sleeping. And unconsciously, the person is still changing position. You know, or is, I mean, you know that the person is not conscious of that thing. It will just be changing. It's because the brain is still working. Hallelujah. So, the what drives the affections of man is the will. And that will is a government of the heart. Your will is a government of your heart. So, most of the things you pick and you do is because the government that is in your heart is giving you, is prompting you to do it. They will show you imaginations. And they will show you, they will build arguments within your heart. Sometimes you'll be speaking to yourself. It's an argument. That speaking to yourself and responding to that thoughts in your heart. There are some like, let's say, let's say like 1,000 angels or 1,000 people are fighting within you. So they will be the one to generate thoughts. You will do it. They will start laughing at you behind the scene. That whole scene. In the court session. And because God is a judge God and is a righteous God, Satan knows that God is a righteous God. Satan knows that God doesn't play with his words. Especially if there is no intercessor praying. Or there is no much more prayer that was available to rescue that person. God will give him chance. We have so many scriptures in the Bible. What happened to the time of Job was there was no one. It was only interceding for his children. Nobody was there to interfere. 
interceded for him. And you can see because he was interceding to him for his children, Satan did uh, God didn't even call the attention of his children to him because that prayer availed much. God now called the attention of him, the intercessor to sit down. And because it was God that called the attention, so it means that the heart of Job was pure. It was the government of God that was in that heart of Job. But because God told Satan that there is no man like him on this heart. <laughs> I've never seen any man in his own days. He was the only pure man that God has ever formed. So his heart, the government of God, you know, the temple of God was in his heart. The makeup of God on heart was in him. And he was there interceding every day for his children. Who knows? Probably they must have seen a cause of So in your heart, there is a government. It is that government that will help you to set your affection on the things that are above. Though they help you when you also direct your thoughts into the government of God. So if you are a righteous son, who always do the will of God? Who always fear God? Who will never do anything without the leading of God? Then your heart is pure. But sometimes, that's why that you are the righteous person, sometimes you may be distracted with some other kind of thoughts. And because you are being distracted, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 23, it says, Guide your heart. It's not saying you should put bad wire or put, uh, um, um, put, put uh, security CCTV or something like that. It's just saying you should close your heart against another government. That government is in the world. <laughs> And let me tell you, if you check the tabernacle of Moses, you discover that everything outside that tabernacle is what is called the world. Everything in circuit of that tabernacle is what is called the world. So, but one thing that makes that tabernacle as just one the lens is not even up to, you know, <laughs> it's not as is what makes that tabernacle to be. Uh, to be the height of that tabernacle, despite it was on the ground, the, the, the height of that tabernacle is higher than all the surrounding uh, 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 red that surround, surrounded that tabernacle called the world. What made that tabernacle one small tabernacle like that? Higher than all the world is because that tabernacle will connect God. Amen. It connects to God as above. So the whole world that surrounded the tabernacle connects to the second heaven, the government of the second heaven. But that tabernacle connect to God that is above the second heaven. So, for you to see a pure man that sometimes receives another kind of impure thought is because there is something that is driving him or his heart to pick from. It means there is a part in him that has not been fully conformed to Christ. 
It might be a dot, one dot, or one number out of 1,000 numbers. If that one particular number has not been, has not conformed to Christ, Satan may be using that just one number to come in. So if he says you go out, that your heart is telling you to allow all the numbers to align to God. Put all your head in one basket of God. Let me tell you, when everything is aligned to God, let somebody pass naked. Your eyes will not see anything. Amen. You will open your eyes, but you are not seeing anything. Because you're just opening your eyes, you are not in that realm. So you say, God, you say, God, stand. And it's not even just so God said, God stand. For God to stand. was when the stone uh, stealing and he saw that God stood the Lord stood these are the two places that I've ever seen in the Bible probably there is another one that I've not studied but these are the two places in the Bible that I saw that God stand See, God stand so God always stands when he wants to judge. God stands in the congregation of the mighty, in church among the gods. So if you see that somebody is doing, is saying that I want to do this, or this is what I will do, and this is what I, and he kept saying that thing continuously. Ah, <laughs> two things: is that, that is that, that the Satan has won the case, or it is a government, very strong government that have finished things in the in his heart, in the realm of the spirit that's called the hearts, and. They have <laughs> to be honest with you, it's only that 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 government can only finish that man if that man is an unbeliever. But if the man is a believer, even if it is still a babe, Satan must always go to God. But if the man is an unbeliever, he doesn't need to go to God. They will set a court within themselves. And the accusers will always fall. Let me open the place and close. Psalm 57. Thank you. 
The wicked plotted against the just. Yeah, yes, sir. 37 the store. The wicked plotted against the just and gnashed upon him with his teeth. The wicked plotted against oh. the righteous mm. and clashed their teeth at them. Mm. They always plan evil. Mm. Mm. So in their court, they will, that is what, if you watch some African films, you will see that uh, when they when they have their group meeting in the big night, they will begin to accuse a particular person and they will even lie. They will say things that the person didn't even do just to have a higher hand. And because there is no one to, if you see that they call the person because they want to kill the person, they've already finished the person, they want to kill the person. They will never call the person that, okay, can you say the, your own side? Evil will never do that. It's only a righteous judge or a righteous person, a just man that does that. He will, somebody will speak and say, okay, you come and say your own side because there are two sides to every matter. But evil people, they don't do that. Evil people will not tell other person to come and speak his own because it involves their whole members or their whole member. The wicked plot against the righteous, the righteous, and gnash their teeth against them. The wicked draws the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and the needy to slay those whose ways are upright to slay them so if they can do that to the righteous in the court of heaven and there is no one to avenge Jesus always stand as the lawyer for us why Satan always starts start as the second? You know, in every court, you must have a, a two standby lawyer one to avenge and one to accuse. I mean, to defend. So you only have two lawyers before a court in every case that has been brought. One is to defend. One to is to accuse. Bible even says in John 10 that Satan come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus come to give life. And the, and the word of God proceeded that life. He said, and life abundantly. So in the court of heaven, one comes to. So in the case of Job, there was no one to defend him. No more. So when Satan said, don't worry, it's because of this, because of that, because there is no one 
to stand and say, no, it's not because of me, it's because the righteous man. He will never do that. You know, that, that person must have said something that will make us say yes. <laughs> you know, like every time everybody brings an accuser, like you see two people arguing and they are saying things. If you've been to where it is a debate, oh, debate is even too much. Let's talk about arguments. Two people arguing. <laughs> that's that's the way. That's the best way to see the positive side of argument. Two people are arguing about a particular thing. Maybe two of them are religion. Even maybe two of them are pastors. Not even talk about. They are Christian, very strong Christian. They are talking about a matter. <laughs> Just be quiet and be looking at them. What will make another one to keep quiet and you will never say anything again is if one has said something that the second one has never come into. That's the only way to win Satan. So when Bible is talking about um, unhealthy arguments, <laughs> when transaction is happening within your heart, You have to ask for mercy. Say, God, have mercy on me. Even that's the best way to be a big man. When something is happening, ask God, ask, help me. Because initially, you must have been responding that thought in your heart. You must have been responding. And you must have got to level like maybe you should ask now. If you've led to a particular level, think again. Before you go ahead, think again. And when you think, consider help. Say, God, have mercy on me. God, help me. Then you will see how help will come from the Lord, the maker of heaven and heart. And you will have peace within your heart. So, to set your affection on things above you, something, if this, if an argument, that argument can be anything. There may be two evil spirits arguing. And because they are manipulating you, don't think that the two evil spirits will be arguing. They are manipulating your heart. They are trying to generate abundant thought in your heart. So that you can speak, or so that you can act, or so that you can react. They are just playing games with you. They are playing games. By the time they finish you and you are hurted, then the two of them will hug themselves in with one in. So when you are seeing hard you made, but you call it hard you made, or every pretension. Because they are no civil spirit, they are pretending. They are just manipulating you. But we will call Satan a calling. It is a cunning Satan. It's one that is weak. Wisdom has been corrupted. But that is a corrupted wisdom, but it's still wisdom. When you talk about corrupted wisdom, it's a wisdom that has been tarnished against the wisdom of God. So when you are on your seat, sitting down on your on the sofa, or you are just lying down on your bed, and you sit things are, you are talking to yourself and things is happening within you. Government, <laughs> the, the government of Satan is, 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 is working things within you. They are generating thoughts. They will expand the abundant thoughts and your mouth will speak it. Because before your mouth can speak it, you are already connected. You have already aligned to that government. And you become the image of that government. When you become the image, it means that you want to act, you want to speak. You have become one. So don't let some ruling powers, don't let argument in the courts. Without asking for mercy to take charge of your life. Because if it's taken charge, then your will will stand. It's like you must hurt. But I, I want to give you this 
advice if it happens as a child of God, as a son, I don't be a son that has led obedience by suffering, but a son that has been following the leading of God. We get it to that level because by the time you've learned obedience, you won't have done that. Or if you are the kind of person that you are still a son, but you've not learned obedience by suffering, then ask for mercy. God will help you. So your heart is a realm of the spirit. Your heart is the realm of the spirit. It now depends on the government that rules in that realm. Hallelujah. Amen. One verse and I close. Just to confirm what I just said to Psalm 37, verse 8. He says, cease from hunger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Another version says, refrain from hunger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. So when you are in the realm, when in the particular school they are trying to change you they are trying to and you are just comporting yourself just asking for help and the help doesn't come on time or it comes and is still trying to help you know try to strengthen you you know please when there are things are generating when uh, sometimes let me tell you you stay in the class or you 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 pass through some things that it will take time, you will be happy for help. Help will not come on time. It's not that the Holy Spirit is not within you, it's there, it's to help you, it's to comfort you. But sometimes things will just be so hard, everything will just be there, you are there safe. You know, just, you know, they want to. Ah, May God help you. May God give us understanding. Refrain from what? Hunger. Most times at that time, it's only hunger that this thing will lead to. Be free from hunger. If you read from verse 1, you will understand what I'm saying. Be free from what? Hunger. Trust in the Lord. You know? Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desire of your heart. Hallelujah. So, I just want you to understand that what makes you to uh, respond to the flesh of Jesus or to the stone of Satan is because of government in your heart. And you are a man physically here, but there's another man of you that is in that realm. So as you are physically appear on heart, your person, as I'm talking to you, uh, my, my me is still within me. My heart. The man of the heart is there. Everyone has the man of the heart. So, the connection between the man of the heart <coughs> and you. <coughs> so, for you to see a man called alignment to something, the man of the heart must either be engaged or be free to, to, to. When we talk about deliverance, Salvation is the one of the heart. So, as I'm talking to you, <coughs> there is another me within me. That is why man is a little bit complex to understand. So, when they are calling, uh, when God and Satan was discussing about Job, Job was that God. And Job was also physical. And when God was saying, See my man, see my son, Job, he was pointing to a particular person. But in the courts, sometimes you don't have the right to speak. <laughs> in every court, no man has the right to speak. It is your lawyer that speaks. 
So Job was there, but Job wasn't born to, uh, to defend him. Hallelujah. So what, whatever your heart, there is a government in your heart. And that government, they will always have concession. So pray all the time. And if you have someone that is not a believer and is acting so funny, always pray for the person. If you have people that are still babes, pray for the person. The prayer of the righteous who speak for that person. God will you. That's why you see somebody say, I'm praying, and I saw a particular minister of God appear. No. It's because what happened was that when you were praying for that person, Jesus will use your image to stand. So when you say, I pray, and I saw image of somebody, it's because it's a sign that that person has been praying for you. Somebody is praying. They used to tell us that it's because God wants to show the image of the person that you can relate to speak to you. Yes. But most of that person is praying for you. And if it is the person that you don't know that appears, is that the person is praying for all the believers in the world? And at that time, at that whole session happened, Satan used that prayer of that person to appear in court. So, I mean, sorry, Jesus used the, he made the prayer of that person to appear in court. Because Jesus used the image of that person to appear in court. That prayer of that person will, represent, will show as the image of that person. So, Jesus will use that prayer of that person. He will use that. You know, prayer is, is, is a medium, is a channel to talk to God. So, Jesus will just enter to that prayer. And because the prayer was coming from that person, so Jesus will come in the image of that person that, was, that is praying for you to appear in the court and defend you. And in the way, you know, in the woman court, George always sits, but God stand. Let's close our eyes and ask God, help. Raise people for me. Most times, if you see people praying for you, it's because you are also praying for someone. God will always go to the back of people. He said, hey, more than water shall be waters. Shall be watered. But if you see somebody who is, who only one person prays, and nobody is, because the person is still a babe, still immature, he's okay. So as you are praying for that person, that God should help the person, at the same time, bring several versions of the prayer. God, bring this person to yourself. Bring this person closer. Is that like bring this person to be saved? Or bring this person that is saved, bring the person closer. So this is a call session in every heart. Depending on the ruling government that sits in the house. Hallelujah. God bless you.